Good morning. This is Mijanur Raman from Toronto. Today is June 5th, year 2019. Yesterday, on the video number 6th, I talked about decision-making process. And what we left off is that the possibilities of financing your business. So we left off where or if your business is ready to take off. So now from the recapture from the previous video, as mentioned is that you now business forms nowadays with professionals with management team in place and expert experts in a management team a group of experts and they form large, large business and they go public now this has been um, this has been quite a you know um, this has been very very um, traditional model uh, it has been becoming a traditional model over the last decade or so. It had been or have been. Um, now, let's, before you talk about the new financing, how my ideas on it, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about the traditional financing. And before you wanted to see whether you, before you take, before you take off to with our business um, going public, going multinationals or, or, or global, or whatever the the settings might be, we want to check the safety checks. So, so um, today I actually got myself a pen. So, um, costed me a dollar, I guess. But anyway, um, so I wanted to. I wanted to I, I make some um, uh, notes today so that I can um, I can share those safety checks with you. Um, so before we get to that, um, I want to talk about the safety check. Um, so what are the safety checks we need to make sure that the um, that uh, we have it in in place um, or you have it in place for your business so the um the safety sex that contains is that the cash flow from the uh, your operation your business whether it's positive so Cash flow is something that I always um, I always talk about. Cash flow is something it's called blood. Um, it's it's a blood in your system. So if we have a body, it needs blood to run the brain, the fuel for our body. Food is the fuel, but the the blood is the, the it keeps everything alive. If the blood stops flowing, we die, right? So same thing in a, in a business if the operation cash flow from the operation is not positive if it is not flowing then the business will die it will have a going concern so unless it's a very specific niche type business or research and development that requires certain time frame to take off otherwise a um, lot of underwriters a lot of uh, securities regulators uh, before they pass that um, before the before they let you go public they want they have some safety checks and um, this depends the regulations by regulations country by country and the uh, regulators by regulators and also the underwriters they have their own criteria of assessing risk right so the regulation is mostly the legal point from the points and the the underwriters is basically they address the business risk um, all those risks where that the the underwriters 
they will ask us whether actually um, whether um, whether your business is um, ready to be financed publicly or other methods that are available to you now the another option that the uh, another safety check safety check number two so number one would be the whether business is providing positive cash flow from, from your operation right number two whether whether you have the ability to meet your current obligation um, or obligations from long term that is that is due either by covenant within a year that is that because there's current liability current, current liabilities current liabilities whether your business has the cash sufficient cash or ability or liquidity to pay those and that's often the ratios comes in place to check those whether you know whether you have the solvency whether you have the ability to pay your dues current obligations on as they incur or as they as they as they do and so number 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 third is that the um whether whether you have any whether the business has any credit risk right so um, whether your your business is downgraded because of the credit risk, right? So often businesses has the um, uh, business business are rated by a credit rate credit bureau or credit credit rating agencies, and they are placed within a credit um, score. And and this is score. And let's not talk about the credit score today, or credit credit rating, uh, you know, but let's know this that the if your business is poorly rated by a credit reporting agency or credit bureau or credit um, rating agencies um, you might um, you might want to think about your business risk um, then you'd also have to look at the whether your um, collectibles are assurable whether you have assurance in your collectibles meaning is that the whether your account receivables are legally collectible or whether they have their you know from the historical point of view whether whether because you would have to pay your long you know the you would have to the money has to come from somewhere right and and if you're selling and if you're not receiving your receivables account receivables then what's the point of getting into business right so you'd have to make sure that your account receivables are um are actually following schedules or aging methods criteria and whether you have any um, safety in place or some sort of um, um, some sort of team in place that is actually um, uh, responsible for collecting your account receivables on a timely manner so so let's recapture that one is that the your cash flow from operation to you whether the business has whether the business has current obligation that is do whether number three whether your business has credit credit risk and number four whether your account receivables are collectibles are collect uh, can be collected on a timely manner number number five is that the whether um and what our number five would be something that I wanted to talk about your, your your ratio checks to make sure that the you were solvent where your asset to um, um, you know the different ratio your your um, um, current ratios are you know um, and your your ratios that is your solvency ratios for your financial statements your working capitals and and also the the ratios from the long-term um, asset and liabilities um, that's something that you got to take a look at that um, and also you'd have to take a look at the, um, the it's a good idea you know what if you really look closely if you go to a bank to apply for a loan um, they have a whole bunch of listing for your or your ratios um, uh, also, if you're listening to these videos, if you have done your um, corporate financing, I think it's most likely in course um, two or second course or third course that deals with corporate um, corporate um, 
financing and you probably deal with a lot of ratios there there is a whole chapter that deals with a whole bunch of ratios i'm not a very big fan of it but those has to be uh, checked because you know um, sometimes numbers actually provide some sort of indications of um, of how well you are doing and how well the corporation is doing so that is something that's a good idea and number six would be very 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 important who are your auditors and um, and what kind of opinion they've provided on your financial statements because you don't want to waste your time going to the um, underwriters because it's very cost effective um, and if you have an adverse you know um, opinion by the auditors on your financial statements what's the point of wasting time so um, you want to make sure that the your financial statements the auditors that opinion that is provided is it's un, you know unqualified opinion meaning is that the they have they have no opinion and the the financial statements had been or have been prepared based on the based on the ifrs which is ifrs stands well, a lot of people know that what IFRS, ifrs stands for it's an accounting policy so previously we used to follow gap generally accepted principles um so it has changed to ifrs so this this um this financial reporting standard um it it is we they want to make sure that the anything ab ab abroad everything within that is trading in worldwide they actually follow this ifrs it's actually a good idea and it's really an amazing idea and i think i think i think it is an absolutely phenomenal idea for business to be um business to be um measured or um uh, recognized or they have a they have a certain certain evaluation or certain recognition criteria or policy in place that would provide a certain standard to um, to analyzing the financial statements and that is the ifrs now um this private nowadays because of the gap is gone so you know they use the p gap private entity gap often you might probably have you know have that so let's say if you want a mid-sized company and and um and and um and um, a large, even a large company, but you are not sure whether you would, you know, whether you would have an audit, whether you pass the auditing, and and you would have an um, unqualified opinion. So you want to ask that. So if you choose, if you happen to choose a, a big firm at the very beginning, a reputable firm, accounting firm, they would be able to provide you with certain guidance. So maybe they will provide you on the review engagement of your financial statements that where they would probably tell you exactly um, what you need to do, um, whether whether they'll give you some sort of signal, some sort of indication that, hey, you know, your accountant might probably would say, hey, look, you know, I think it's a good idea to get an auditor statement done. And in fact, a lot of business, even a bank nowadays, even if you're to finance your business privately, they also ask for the audited financial statements. Now, these audited financial statements may not, may often, often, uh, I come across quite a few of them. They, are, they, they don't meet the IFRS standard, but there's their audited financial statements. So I saw some, some, I come across some of those financial statements without mentioning that this corporation's name or the preparers of the accounting statements. They actually, they, they, there wasn't sufficient notes disclosure. There was a revenue recognition problem, the expense matching problem. There's a, there was a problem with the, with the um, full disclosures on the uh, conversion of the, um, the, um, a long-term liability to um, the short-term liability to a long-term liabilities so um, there was a problem with the the tax um, um, tech the the the, the um, recognition of tax liabilities and tax um, tax expenses so actually if you look at the um, financial statements the the tax assets tax liabilities and tax expenses tax payables a bit complex because of the ifrs it just became slightly complex when when the when we decided to adopt the ifrs so that is something that you need to look at it whether your you know whether your account whether your accountants 
or your legal teams are okay where they're working side by side or your financial advisors or financial planners in this case if you have a bank then if, or if you have a you know if you're working with a bank or financial agency or financial firm um, there will be financial planners um, now be careful with this a financial planner is they have more pro product knowledge than often might you know more than an accountant or probably legal side of it because they deal with a lot of products in the market right so and this guy could have a securities license or they might be licensed through um um you know i the um ia rock in canada or they might have combination of ia rock or you know the, the the securities license insurance license um they might have a CFP, they might have a CFA, they might have accounting on, on top of that, they would have accounting certification or designations. Um, they would have, um, they would have often, um, they might have a chief, you know, they might, they might have written chief compliance officer examinations. Um, I had to write that. Um, so um, they might have written, uh, it is very important that you, you look at this, right? Because they have a lot of product knowledge, a financial advisor, a financial planner. So they could you know, write, guide you to the right direction. And in fact, they could actually introduce you with the investment bankers or investment dealers, right? So because these guys really work with the investment, um, investment dealers because your bank, you're not your bank, but banks, we'll talk about at some point about bank, um, banking policies, um, bank act and so forth but let's not get to that today um i will talk about that but um so this, this your financial planner or financial advisor or your financial guy is highly connected with your investment dealer actually is part of the integrated part of this investment dealer so it's a good idea to have a good relationship with your financial planner right or financial advisor or your bank manager it's a good idea to have that relationship um now i'm not talking about relationship other than the you know um, legal uh, bona fide relationship i'm talking about legal bona fide relationship where everything you know measures up and is standard um and everyone you know meets the fiduciary, uh, the fiduciary and, and, and duty of cares to each other so so that was number seven uh, which is the 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 financial statements has to be you have to get that vibe from the this is the safety check right because you don't you don't want to incur cost by you know hiring an audit team and then you look at that you, you don't meet the IFR you can't you know you're not profitable you, you, you know, your operation has no money you, there is no there is no blood in your corporation there is no blood flow which is the cash flow from the operation there's nothing there so what's the point of you know have a wasting your money resources and, and creating a resources scarcity so that's something that you want to take a look at that um uh, so another thing is that the your underwriters so often your financial plan are probably be connected with underwriters right so so this is the this, this is one of the main reason you really want to be connected with your with your financial planner or financial advisor or securities advisor because it is very important this is who will introduce you to often could be your accounting firm if you don't have a large accounting firm so um so so you're so they might you know he might have he might know some underwriters and in this case so often large accounting firms also work as an underwriters as well so uh, often insurance companies they have um they might have an arm's length uh, you know underwriters that they work with um so there's something that you need to be aware of so so if you pass the standard, the audit, the you know audited financial, uh, audited standard of the IFRS financial statements, then um, then you would you would need to make sure that the um, the you have a good team of underwriters in place. So if you need only one, then fine. But if the underwriters feel that there's a lot of business risk or and credit risk, a lot of risk for them to take on the deal by themselves, or the, the, the offering is really large for taken by one underwriters, then in that particular case, they might the main underwriter might probably hire um, secondary and, and the other underwriters to help them with, depending on expertise. So not all the underwriters they have expertise so depending on the area of the business you might have to choose the right type of underwriters and the main underwriters then will look at it is that the and then assess their business risk and excuse me and they assess their business risk and probably hire the other underwriters to help them with the underwriting process and they'll probably let's not talk about the underwriting today we'll talk about another day let's talk about a safety check 
So you want to have a bit of conversation with the underwriters. And, you know, you probably want to give them your financial statements at the very beginning and have, have some, you know, just, um, you know, um, have someone to look at it and provide you some sort of opinion before you incur any cost. Um, before, because, you know, you want to get, you want to get some vibe and say, you know, say, hey, I have some financial statements that are audited and would you like to provide me with some sort of feedback? And at this point, I would, you know, you are not, uh, you don't want to incur any cost, but it's just an opinion basis. There will be a lot of underwriters, they want to take a look at it for, uh, at a free, and at a, they want to, you know, provide you with some sort of opinion, and, and, uh, I think without incurring any fees, but those those opinions may not be, they, they may not, they may want to say they want to be liable for that. They probably want to give you some sort of, a rule of thumbs of indication, but once you hire them, they'll probably provide you with the all those, um, um, all those. Uh, again, these underwriters they 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 have a different contract. They might work on a contract basis. They might take on a best effort basis. They might take on a you know or whatever the security sells. So, but you want to see, you want to talk to your underwriters. They might have different policies or the fee cost or the you know they might have different standard of. Um, you know, doing business. So someone, someone might say, well, you know, we'll go on the best effort basis or we'll buy the entire stocks. Well, or, you know, you might want to pay us some fees in advance before you make the decision to whether, we, you know, whether we want to uh, work with you or not, right? So because a lot of time, cons you know, time consuming for them to go through assess those business risks for them, underwriting risks for them. So that is something that you want to get from your underwriters. So, um, and then, which is the number, um, I think it was number seven or eight. Um, I may have missed one number, but anyway, um, um, the okay. So that was actually number nine. The the arrangement that you your underwriters offer um, on your the, the 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 opinion that the underwriter offers to you or to, as business owners or to the business management or the management team. Um, whether you know whether it's a green signal you have to to go ahead with the underwriting, so that's something that you want to consider that before incurring any cost, right? Um, and also at the same time, you want to see whether you have any private financing that is available to you as well, because sometimes going public could be really expensive, and you know you may not have sufficient amount of offerings um, or the shares available or outstanding or authorized, right? So you want to make sure that the um, you have, you know, you have looked at the opportunity costs for the financing. Now, these are all traditional way of doing business, traditional way of underwriting your business. So, this is not something, this is not something that um, uh, fancy as of yet. We haven't talked about the fancy stuff yet. But let's, this is really basic, this is really um, usual stuff that people really deal with on a, on a, on a, on a, on a daily basis, on an ongoing basis, and in a traditional, traditional way. So, that was number ten or number nine, number nine or ten on the the whether you want to um, get an opinion on the private financing, right? So there's a different kind of private financing. You could um, you could go to um, um, you could probably go to uh, investors and have you know sell them shares privately, or you could um, uh, you know uh, I was watching a show on on, um, on a TV show. I think it's called the um, um, drag on something i can't remember what this show was but anyway um they have um, um uh, they have some sharks you know and and they actually um uh, you know they invest in your uh, in your business but um, i would really be very careful with this they're doing business with um uh, private financing you want you don't want to lose control right so that's something that you want to take a look at it but if the cost of doing business is really less then you know why not and if it is the right team yes if it's the right guy if they have right expertise uh, then and they might want to probably want to get some shares and ownership of your business whether they have a controlling whether they have con whether you know often they might say well we want to place a clause with the borrowing that we we want to get involved in decision making um, process um, so or some sort of covenant some sort of regulation some sort of you know, contract they might have and uh, they might also want to say well and you have to meet the certain ratio certain uh, profitability to to um, to um, to um, 
to maintain the financing. So if it is uh, if it is the debt they are offering, then they will say, well, you know, if the business is doing well, then then we want to convert that into shares. And if the business is not doing well, we want to share, you know, try that if you know convert that into some sort of shareholders loan or some. But you would have to take the legal side of it. The this converting. They, if they are buying the ownership of the corporation and with, later on uh, they're going to convert they have the right to convert that to a bond but it's very rare at uh, these options um, so uh, maybe offered through the preferred similar concept as a prepared preferred shares so um, so you want to take a look at that uh, that is something that you want to make sure that the, you have you have the safety check done and um, very very important number 11 which is the one whether you have a good and expert management um whether you have an expert management on your on the on one board whether the management team has sufficient knowledge expertise and nowadays you could say well your business has over you know 100 years of um, experience in combined right so you might have um, you know 20 guys or you know 30 guys or, or 10 guys you know worth of industry about 20 years of you know they have significant knowledge about the industry and they're really really um, on the top-notch um, professionals or experts, and and those are really valuable asset, right? So that is something that you do want to look into it. Your your management of the of your business. So that's something that you want to make sure that you have the right management on board. And secondly, that the whether you have any incentives, whether you have any whether you offer good incentives to your management team and whether they are, you know, what kind of incentives they, they are offered, whether they have a, a private pension plans, whether they have, um, often nowadays, um, I talked about in my first book, uh, individual pension plans and retirement compensation agreement, RCA. Often these are offered to the management teams. Um, these are really, really good programs for the management teams if it is really good good um, good expert you might be able to offer that individually as well so you know um, often this you know th these are in place deferred compensation program and so forth um, also uh, this is something that you want to look at it right whether they have any stocks purchase you know employee stocks you know 